Today on Subrogation, we're going to discuss holding parents liable for the tortious acts of their minor children. I'm your host for today, Kim Rathbone. Now in subrogation, it's important to identify additional parties that you could hold responsible for damages that occur. And that's especially true when the person who committed the damage is a minor child. When there is a minor child that commits a tortious act, the first thing to do is to look to the parents. And we can do that in a couple of different ways. One is for intentional acts, there are statutes amongst many states that will hold the parents vicariously liable under those circumstances. And then there are other common law circumstances where you can hold the parent liable for their own negligent supervision of the child. Now, these laws are in place because really the parents are in the best position to prevent the harm caused by the minor children. So let's talk about the statutes through intentional acts first. Almost all states have statutes that hold parents responsible for the willful or intentional acts of minor children, and this is through vicarious liability. But there are limitations to these statutes that exist. Some of them will limit based on a condition, like maybe the age of the child, or even the requirement that the child has to live with a parent, but many of them will limit the amount of the dollar figure that the parent can be liable for, like in Maryland. There are a few states, however, where there is unlimited liability, like in Hawaii. There are also vicarious liability circumstances under sponsorship statutes. Now, those are specific statutes that address when parents vouch for financial responsibility when signing for a minor child to obtain their driver's license. Now, under these statutes, many of these will limit the amount that the parent is liable for, but there are states where that liability is unlimited as well, like in Ohio and Florida. If there isn't a statute that will apply or your damages exceed the amount of coverage permitted under the statute, then you can always look to negligent supervision as a possible way to recover under common law. Now this exists when the parent fails to exercise control over their minor child. So when the parent knows that the conduct that the child is committing poses a risk of harm to either person or property, then the failure to exercise control over that child to prevent the harm is negligence on behalf of the parent. Generally, there's not a cap for parents' negligence based in common law under negligence supervision. And there are special circumstances that are particularly addressed under different case law, like when a child is acting at the parent's direction, like on an errand. In those circumstances, many states will say that a principal-agent relationship exists in order to hold the parent liable. This is also the case when a parent approves of or ratifies the tortious act of the minor child. And the third circumstance where a parent is held liable, specifically under case law, is where a parent allows access to a dangerous instrument to the minor child and under those circumstances the parent will be highly scrutinized as well. You might be wondering if it has to be a biological parent of a minor child in order to recover under negligent supervision and the answer is no. Any person who is assuming responsibility for a minor child's care is could potentially be held liable under the negligent supervision theory of liability. If it's a biological parent who no longer has custody or control of the child, there are some states that will not hold them liable for negligent supervision, but there are some that will still consider them to be held liable under those circumstances. The best thing that you can do is to explore insurance coverage with the parent, potentially through homeowner's policies. And that's because oftentimes the homeowner policy will not just cover your home, but it will also cover your family for unintentional damage uh, caused by any of the family members. And that's whether you're at home or you're away from home and damages caused. It's not the case for intentional acts, but oftentimes unintentional acts will be covered under these circumstances. Thanks for joining us today. Please subscribe to our channel to watch more videos and contact us if you'd like further information or to place a claim. I'm Kim Rathbone, that's the long and short of it.